Good afternoon. I am First Lieutenant Ryan Yule, Civil Air Patrol from Bakersfield Composite Squadron, Squadron 121 here in Bakersfield, California. And today we're going to be going over the first task that's required for UDF. UDF is Urban Direction Finding, and that's where we go out and we look for emergency locating transmitters, primarily in urban areas. So it's usually within cities and it's places that we can drive to, but we still have to have some individual equipment with us. So today we're going to work on that first task, which is individual equipment for UDF. And here in just a minute, I'm going to have Cadet Senior Airman Taft, one of our new airmen at the squadron, come up and we're going to go through all of the required items for a trainee for UDF. I have Cadet Senior Airman Taft with me and we're going to go over his required items for UDF trainee. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the task guide. The task guide is something that lists all of the tasks that are required for all of our different qualifications in Civil Air Patrol. This particular task guide covers all of the ground team and urban direction finding team tasks. So we're going to start with the task guide and we're going to open it up to the prepare urban DF team individual equipment and we're going to go through Cadet Senior Airman Taft's items. So the first thing on the list is complete uniform. So you'll notice that Airman Taft is in a complete ABU uniform. You notice that I'm in the corporate working polo uniform. For UDF, senior members are allowed to wear this uniform. For cadets, you get to wear the ABU or the BDU uniform, which is still authorized also. The next thing we have is a notepad and a pencil. So Airman Taft has his notepad and pencil there. The, the notepad and pencil is very beneficial to keep a log, uh, to make notes, so as we get information about where we're looking, about what we're looking for, any relevant information that comes in, we can keep track of that with the notepad and the pencil. The next thing is, anytime we're doing a Civil Air Patrol event, we need to have our CAP identification. So Airman Taft has his Civil Air Patrol identification card. And he's just now working on his uh, qualifications. So he doesn't have his 101 card, but he would need his 101 card to go out on a mission. And as soon as we get him into trainee status, then we'll get that 101 card printed out for him. The next thing we have is a watch. Bingo. Uh, he's Here it is. The Can watch I, of watches. The watch of watches. The watch of watches. Uh, we need to keep track of time so that uh, we know where, how long we've been out. We also need to make uh, ops normal calls, keep track of uh, base so that they know where we're at. So a watch is very handy. The next thing is a reflective vest. Even though we're in urban environments, we still want to make sure that we're seen and readily visible. We are commonly walking around airports and other trafficked areas. So the reflective vest is very important to have with us. The reflective vest is required to be worn anytime we're out of a vehicle on a mission. The next thing, and not everybody requires this, but if you need a comb or a brush, make sure you have a comb or a brush. We want to make sure that we maintain a professional appearance regardless of what we're doing, even if we've been out in the field for a long time. So if you need that comb or brush, make sure you have that comb or brush with you. Task guide, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, the task guide is needed. It gives us instructions on how to do things. It also helps us during the training so that we know what the actual requirements are so that we can get those tasks signed off and get qualified to do the different specialty tracks. And then you'll notice that Cadet Taft has a cell phone. We have to have some way to make contact with everybody else. So whether that's a cell phone, used to be calling cards or change for a pay phone. Anymore, pretty much everybody has a cell phone. And then the next thing that we have is money for a meal. So you'll notice that Cadet Taft has money. We don't know when we leave to go on a mission, whether we're gonna be gone for an hour, make it back by lunchtime, or whether it's gonna turn into a longer mission. There's been times that we've gone out and it turns into a all day, into the evening or night mission. So we get hungry. It's always nice to be able to stop and grab something to eat. 
Different than ground team with UDF, since we are in urban areas, we're never that far away from a convenience store, a fast food restaurant, something that we can get food at. So uh, just a few dollars, something that you can get something to eat if needed if we end up on a long mission. And that is your urban direction finding, pack, individual equipment, with all of the required items for trainee status. And here in just a minute, I'm going to have another cadet, Cadet Second Lieutenant Yules come up, and he has his full individual equipment, and he's gonna talk about that for once you get fully qualified with UDF. I'm now going to have one of our senior cadets, Cadet Second Lieutenant Yules come up. Cadet Second Lieutenant Yules has been on a few actual UDF and also ground team missions. So with him today, he's going to bring his UDF equipment, and Cadet Lieutenant Yules, if you can come up, Cadet Lieutenant Yules is going to show you all of the items in his UDF pack and go through the importance of each item. Lieutenant Yules, thank you, sir. So as you can see, I'm, I'm going to do this a little bit out of order, but as you can see, my orange reflective vest is something that I carry all of my equipment in. So I can be out on a mission and easily access everything while still being comfortable inside a vehicle. So the first thing on the list, I have my complete uniform. Uh, it's under the reflective vest. The uniform is always important because you want to be in the appropriate uniform for the type of weather that you're in, as well as the mission and activity you're doing. On me, I also have a notepad and pen. I prefer using one of the Define Mother Nature notepads. It's a right in the rain notepad. Uh, I can write on this any day, anywhere, whether it's wet or dry, and I won't lose my notes. I also carry two pens with me, just in case either I lose one or one of the other team members doesn't have one. Next, I have my CAP identification, and I carry all of that in an armband so that it's easily accessible and it's viewable by anyone. Along with that, I also have my watch. I wear this watch with me all the time so that I'm used to wearing it and so that I keep track of it at the same time. As far as handkerchief or tissues are, uh, go, I carry a cut up piece of an old t-shirt. Uh, they are soft and they work really good as a handkerchief. And uh, for someone like myself wearing glasses, it gives me something that I can clean my glasses with very easily. As I said, I'm wearing the orange reflective vest. Uh, I don't carry a comb or brush. I don't typically use one when I'm out in the field. I've got the ground and UDF task guide here with me. This is always important to have, especially when you're new and you're having to go through all these tasks with a set or a skills evaluator uh, to get those signed off. I also carry this task guide on my cell phone so that I can readily search for certain tasks without having to look through the whole task guide. I carry a headlamp. I find that headlamps are very useful, especially on these missions, uh, because typically if you're using a headlamp, it's at night and you're probably taking notes. This headlamp has the regular white feature as well as the red feature. And I don't know if it will show up in the video, but the red feature gives me the ability to use it at night without losing my night vision. Along with that, I also carry a compass. The compass can be used as your protractor and as your straight edge ruler. So the, the compass is definitely a multi-purpose item and it will come in handy when you're plotting something on a map uh, at any time. This is also one of the things that I definitely recommend carrying with you if you're going on a long road trip 
along with a few other items just so that you are ready in case something happens. As far as change for phone calls go, I carry my cell phone on me. I also carry a portable battery pack that I keep on the charger just in case we do need to go and that's something that I can unplug, stick in my pack and go really quick and then if my cell phone does die, I can plug it in and charge it back up while we're out in the field. Map case. I carry a large Ziploc bag. It actually states in the task guide that a large Ziploc bag will do. The map case gives you the ability to easily write on your map without permanently marking it. Along with that, it also says that you need to carry alcohol pens, uh, at least two colors, and they can't be the same color as your alternate color on your flashlight. If you've got the same color as your flashlight for your alcohol pen, then it's going to become invisible when you turn on your red or your green light. That's why I carry a black and a green alcohol pen. Uh, I also have a way to erase the alcohol pen and that will easily uh, take that off so that I can start with a blank slate if needed. One meal or personal funds to purchase a meal while prosecuting the mission if appropriate. I carry my wallet on me uh, back up to the cap identification. I carry two CAPIDs just so that in the case that I do forget one or I misplace one while I'm on the mission, I can I, I still have one with me. Uh, I do also carry a little bit of cash on on me inside the vest, uh, but most of what I carry is here in the wallet. Along with that, I've added a few things to my pack that aren't required, but I find are helpful. One of which that I always carry with me are my playing cards. These come in handy, especially when you get stuck at a mission base, because typically you get stuck there for many hours and you can get bored really easily. I definitely recommend these. You can buy them for a dollar at the dollar store. I also carry another flashlight. It's just one of the small mag lights with a clip on it, so I can easily clip it to the vest, inside my pocket, and it gives me a, a second flashlight, but it also gives me just a small one that I can use as needed instead of pulling out my headlamp uh, if it's not very urgent. Along with that, I also carry a chem light and a whistle. The whistle I keep attached to the vest for ground team purposes, but in the case that you do get lost or you are using a search line, having a whistle is definitely important. The chem light is also a light that will help you keep your night vision for longer. It's green, so I can really easily break this and I can use it inside of a vehicle or outside for long periods of time, uh, up to eight hours, I believe. And it acts as another flashlight without running down the battery on my headlamp or my mag light. Along with that, I also carry my personal EF Johnson 5100 series radio. When you're going out on one of these UDF missions, I definitely recommend having one of these with you. Uh, at, at least one. I do recommend having two to three if your squadron has the tools to give that to you. Along with that, I carry a set of gloves just in the case that I may need them and flagging tape. Both of these things can be used on UDF missions and ground team missions. If it's cold outside, I can throw the gloves on and my hands aren't as cold throughout the mission. Uh, or if we are having to tie down an aircraft or uh, if we do end up going 
deeper than we typically do, we, I have those with me just in the case of. Also, I always recommend carrying your Leatherman, Swiss Army knife, something along those lines with you. Having that multi-tool is always helpful. It's come in handy more times than I can count, so I definitely recommend carrying it. Aside from that, that's my pack. That's what I carry with me whenever I'm doing UDF and ground team for that matter. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can take this vest and I put my survival kit in the back of it and I have the portion of the ground team pack that stays on me at all times and then I have an additional backpack that goes on with that. Cadet Lieutenant Eels, thank you for sharing that with us. We hope that this has been beneficial for you and we look forward to seeing you on future missions at SARXs. If you have any questions, make sure that you contact your squadron emergency services officer. Uh, currently for Squadron 121 in Bakersfield, that would be me for the emergency services training officer. But for your squadron, whoever that is, find out who that is, get involved with emergency services, and not only are you serving your community, but you're also getting an opportunity to learn some neat things, get some great training, and uh, have a good time with all of your fellow uh, squadron members. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope it's been beneficial to you. I really enjoyed having Cadet Senior Airman Taft and Cadet Second Lieutenant Yules join us today and share their UDF packs and their UDF equipment with us. If you have any questions, contact your squadron emergency services training officer. If you want to leave a comment below, feel free to, and if we see it, we'll get back and try and help you out with that. But I encourage you, whether you're a senior member or a cadet, to get involved with emergency services, and UDF is a great place to start that out. Have a nice day.